On today's show, Auto Shanghai 2021 embraces change and goes all in on electric cars. The Biden administration in the United States publishes its plans on how it will accelerate and deploy electric vehicle charging infrastructure to accelerate the nation's shift to electric vehicles. And sales data proves that you don't need to be in a big city to own an EV. These stories add more coming next. This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from New Zealand's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we're the leading supplier of electricity to electric vehicles in New Zealand. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. Thank you for joining me. Let's head to Auto Shanghai 2021, which is where we're starting today's show. Held last week, Auto Shanghai's theme for the year was embracing change, something it most certainly did with more green vehicles on display than ever before. In addition to the mainstream Western brands who debuted cars this year, more on that later in the show, the Chinese market segment welcomed a slew of new electric cars, including the Aura Punk Cat, which looks like an old school Volkswagen Beetle, the SAIC Rou Jing SUV, the Netta U Pro, Hong Chi HS5, and the Heng Chi 2 EV. There's also the BYD Xtreme concept and E Series concept which make use of BYD's latest blade battery pack. And because imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, there was also the BAIC Arc Fox, which to my mind looks just like a Tesla Model 3. We are all familiar with the term PPE, meaning personal protective equipment, but at Auto Shanghai 2021 this week, Audi taught us it can mean something else, premium platform electric. That's the name given to a brand new vehicle platform which Audi and other Volkswagen Group brands will use to underpin a new range of high-performance cars. At the top of the list, the Audi A6 e-tron, which debuted in concept form at the show. All PPE vehicles feature 800 volt rapid charging at speeds of up to 270 kilowatts and can offer all-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive. The A6 e-tron concept features a 100 kilowatt hour battery pack with more than 700 kilometers 435 miles per charge. Like other Audi e-tron concepts, expect this one to enter into production in the near future. General Motors premium brand Cadillac unveiled the production version of the Cadillac Lyric EV this week. And unlike some automakers whose concept cars and production cars vary quite a bit, the Lyric is almost indistinguishable from its concept. Powered by GM's Ultium battery pack and drivetrain, the Cadillac Lyric will feature a rear-wheel drive variant at launch, capable of traveling in excess of 300 miles, 482 kilometers per charge. It will also come with 19 kilowatts of onboard charging capability and the ability to rapid charge at 190 kilowatts. Starting from 59,990 US dollars, the order books open this September with deliveries due to start early next year. Hot on the heels of its recent unveiling of the production EQS electric sedan, Mercedes-Benz unveiled its second EV in as many weeks in Shanghai this week in the form of the Mercedes-Benz EQB electric SUV. Based on the internal combustion engine GLB, this all-electric car isn't quite as exciting or as capable as the EQS, but it's designed to be a more family-friendly vehicle. With a promised range of drivetrain choices, front-wheel or all-wheel drive, the EQB will launch with a 66.5 kWh battery pack and 100 kW DC quick charging capability, although longer-legged variants are hinted at in the future. What's particularly interesting here is that the EQB will be available as a seven-seater, which, to be honest, is much needed in a marketplace with very little choice for families of more than five people. Right now, we're not sure on global availability or pricing. Continuing its electric vehicle transition, Volkswagen launched the latest member of its ID family of electric vehicles this week in the form of the ID6. Launched at, you've guessed it, Auto Shanghai 2021, the ID6 has been specifically designed for the Chinese market and will be available in two wheel and four wheel drive configurations. There's going to be a range topping four motion variant, which will offer 225 kilowatts of power at the wheels. It will be available in two variants, the ID6 Cross and the ID6X. If the design looks familiar, that's because the car is based on the ID Cross concept of a few years ago, and frankly, I'd love to see this one on sale around the world. Like the Mercedes Benz EQB, it's also available as a seven seater. Fiat has officially launched the all electric version of its popular Ducato van, the E Ducato. 
Based on the same platform as the internal combustion engine Fiat Ducato, which I should note is available in North America as the Ram Promaster, the eDucato uses a modular battery pack system that can be configured in three or five module variants at the time of filming. This translates to either a 47 kilowatt hour battery pack or 79 kilowatt hour battery pack. That might seem small, but remember, most commercial vans drives a predictable route and have a period of the day when they can charge, which is the driver's lunch break. Available in box van, cab chassis and minivan variants, reservations are now open in Europe, but we shouldn't expect this in North America anytime soon. Lordstown Motors published details of its experience in the SCORE San Philippe 250 off-road race this week after pulling out just 40 miles into the Baja Raced series. While I've heard conflicting reports about why the pickup retired, Lordstown's official story is that it made a strategic decision after it became apparent that the off-road race series was a lot more challenging than anticipated, resulting in higher power consumption and thus reduced range. Rather than get stuck in the mountain stage with no way to easily rapid charge, the team decided to pull out and continue testing outside of the race. I've seen plenty of off-road endurance race series, and frankly it's astonishing that Lordstown, a company that's preparing to enter into production this year, hadn't actually figured out how much power drain would be an issue, but I'm glad the company seems happy with the testing it carried out after it fell out of the race. We've been closely following the production recall of the Hyundai Kona EV for many months. The recall, in case you're not aware, is to replace traction batteries in all Kona EVs after a problem was discovered with the LG Energy Chinese manufactured original packs. Sadly, I don't have an update on the recall program. I know several of you have reached out to ask for help, and we have been trying to get an official answer. But this week, the story took a new turn when Hyundai announced it was ending Korean sales of the model forever. While Hyundai will no longer produce or sell the Kona EV for its domestic market, it has stated publicly that it intends to continue producing the vehicle for European and North American markets. So watch this space. The Biden administration in the United States has published a slew of information on its plans to electrify America's vehicle fleet, expanding charging infrastructure and creating new jobs in the process. In a coordinated press push, the US Department of Transportation has announced guidance on how grants can be used to deploy charging infrastructure and newly designed alternative fuel corridors. The DOE has announced a new funding and partnership program for electric vehicle charging research and development. And the General Services Administration has published a progress report on its goal of transitioning the federal fleet to electric. Ultimately, the current administration wants to install half a million rapid charging stations across the US in the next few years. The US might be finally pushing for electric vehicles to become the norm, but on the other side of the world, quite literally, the Australian state of Victoria is doing its damnedest to stop all EV adoption. From July, it says it will force electric vehicle drivers to keep a logbook of their EV trips so that they can then be charged 2.5 cents tax per kilometer traveled the next time they renew their vehicle registration. If you don't produce and keep your records for five years, you will be fined. But while the rule is already agreed on, 25 organizations, including some of the world's largest automakers, have signed onto a plea published in the Age newspaper this week, asking the state government to cancel its plans. Given that just 0.7% of all cars are electric in the state, this policy is premature and frankly, pretty draconian. Porsche has published its first quarter figures, and while its Macan and Cayenne remain the two most popular vehicles globally, the all-electric Taycan is continuing to rise in popularity among Porsche customers. According to official figures, 9,072 Taycans were delivered during the year, outselling the 718 Boxster, 718 Cayman, and Porsche Panamera. While the Taycan sold less than one half the number of Macans or Cayennes sold, what's important to note here is that the closest model to the Taycan is of course the Panamera, and that's the model that sold the least. It shows, I think, that when a car company produces a compelling electric vehicle that competes squarely against an internal combustion engine sibling, the EV is likely to be more popular. It never used to be the case, and it shows that attitudes to electric vehicles really are changing at last. And finally, ask people who 
aren't electric car owners, who can and who can't own an EV, and I'm guessing that a high number of respondents are likely to say that you need to live in town, a city, or suburbia in order to own an electric car. That, as we've long been illustrating, isn't true. In fact, a large number of the team here and our audience live in the countryside and drive an electric car. But this week, we had some hard data to back this all up, specifically from Renault, which published data showing that since its Zoe electric hatchback launched eight years ago, many of its customers live in rural areas of the UK. It not only shows that many automakers are erroneous in focusing exclusively on selling their cars in large cities, but also shows that as EVs and their battery packs have gotten better, they've become far more practical for anyone who wants cheap, affordable transit. And on that note, we are done for the day. Make sure you hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on our next episode. And if you haven't already switched, why not consider switching to New Zealand's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company? It is super easy to make the switch. And if you do, you'll be helping New Zealand wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I'll be back soon with more great videos for you to all enjoy. But until then, I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time!